Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really great day. In today's video, do I want to show you how you can upgrade your Nerd Miner with a Nerd NOS PCB? So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, we are on my desk again, where I do all my soldering stuff and a little bit of R&D and faffering around. And you might have noticed that I was uploading a video about the NerdNOS. So maybe some of you are wondering what exactly is the NerdNOS. So basically, this right here, this PCB is the NerdNOS. What is this? It is a USB-C powered ASIC that you can attach to the LiliGo TS3 display. So this one here is used with firmware such as the NerdMiner. And it is nice and comfy and it does show you plenty of screens and you can see the Bitcoin price and so on and stuff like this. But what it lacks is efficient or a sufficient amount of hash rate. And that's what we're trying to change here with this PCB. This is the NerdNOS. It does have a connector here on the, on the bottom side. So it does connect over these GPIO pins to the Lidigo T display. And then what we will do is we will power the ASIC that is underneath this heatsink here over USB-C and all the communication with the ESP32 in order to control this ASIC chip will happen over the GPIO pins. And as you can see, it is fairly simple to attach it. This one here is a little bit dent, but I will do it in just a second to show you what it looks like. And we will go over the process of how to install it and what you need to do on your phone. Because basically the setup is exactly the same as you would do it on your NerdMiner. So that hasn't changed, but what has changed are the screens that you do see on here, as well as a little bit when it comes to the noise. Because what you do need to do is you need to actively cool this device. And you do see we have pins over here. These are two pins. The right one is five volt and the left one is ground. And there's no way to actually slow down your fan if you do have one. For example, this one here does have ground, five volts and then a PV PWM signal. I don't have a PWM signal uh, thingy on this PCB, so therefore you're not able to actually reduce or increase the speed of your fan. So it is really a good idea to use a fan that is not that loud at 100% speed, such as the Noctur fans. And all you need to do then is, if you have attached it to the fan, you need to use the NerdNOS, attach it to your display, to your NerdMana display, and then we're ready to go. Before we actually now dive into how it looks on the screen, let me quickly show you one that is pre-assembled because maybe some of you guys are not really interested in purchasing an upgrade kit and want to get one that is already pre-assembled. And by the way, links to upgrade kits and to fully assembled kits will be down in the video description below, so don't miss out on them. So this right here is the screen and now maybe some of you are wondering and we need to clarify this here. So we do have two USB ports, which one do we use? It is pretty simple. All you need to do is take the Lilligo T Display S3 and you need to flash the firmware. I will show you this in just a second. And after you're done with that, what we need to do is we need to go over here and put in power to the NerdNOS PCB because the NerdNOS PCB will then power the ASIC and the display. So you only use this USB port on the display for flashing the firmware, not for running the device. It doesn't even work because this right here, this right here is a diode and this doesn't allow any current to flow from the display to the NerdNOS, only from the NerdNOS to the display so that the display itself is safe and we do not overdraw or have too much current on these small GPIO pins, which is good. So this is here the device itself and you can then 3D print yourself a case. I haven't, I haven't designed a case. I do know that Printer Gruber does have a case. NerdMoney.de, they do have a case and a couple other ones are already working on cases as well. I tried my best uh, to design a case, but it was always a little bit of shit. So I never really released any case. So if you want to get your hands dirty with that and create yourself a case, feel free to do so. I really appreciate it. So let's quickly take a look on a pre-assembled kit and what it does and how it looks. So this, for example, and let me quickly change the screens here. This right here is pre-assembled. 
and we do see on the screen here plenty of information. So we see the hash rate and probably this is one important factor. The hash rate of these chips is reduced. This is because it runs over USB-C as you do see here on the right hand side and therefore what it does is it needs to be in a certain range of power draw and the nerd noise with the screen draws around 7 to 8 watts so it is rather small when it comes to the power consumption like half of a bidex ultra the hash rate that we do get on this one here depends on the lack that you do have with the chip but ideally it is in the range between 65 70 giga hash to 120 giga hash so this one right here seems to be stuck at or not stuck but it seems to be in the range of like 80 85 giga hashes it takes a while to average out it is currently running for 10 minutes so give it a little bit of time like half an hour to two hours is a good average to actually figure out what the average of the device is but I'll make sure that all the devices that you do get globally they should be in the range between 65 to 120 giga hash. This is probably a high range but I'll improving the process of figuring out which of these ASICs are performing worse and I'm sorting them out so they will never go out there. So in the future we will only see 100 giga hash and upwards. So we do have the usual nerd minor or nerd no screen here because this is changed. The top one is for the temperature. We are sitting at 50 degrees Celsius. Below is the best difficulty. And this is a nice thing. If I do unplug it and I plug it in again, we do see it is booting up. And afterwards it is showing us the best difficulty that we had previously. 26K is what it currently is setting at. Um, if we do press the upper button we go to the next screen it takes a little bit of time we do get the clock uh, we do the we do see the hash rate the price up here the current block if I do click it again we go on another screen you are used to these screens from the node miner in general but I do like these screens in particular about the node nodes they are really awesome uh, the screen the background on the screen this is what bitmaker created the node nurse itself was a collaboration between pmax public pool and me and uh, I fine-tuned the firmware so now it is really running nicely smoothly and it's giving you plenty of features so this is awesome so let's hop over to the PC and I'll show you how you can flash the nerd NOS firmware on your device and afterwards what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look on how it looks if you do set up the nerd NOS for the first time all right now let's take a look on how to flash your NerdMiner screen with the firmware that you do need to run it as a NerdNOS. Let's quickly go over to the web flasher. This is the BitX web flasher and you can also use this for your NerdNOS. If you click on connect, use the connection to your display, connect to it, select the device, select the NerdNOS, select the board version and the firmware version and then click on start flashing. This will flash the firmware, the NerdNOS firmware to your display and then you're ready to go and to plug in your NerdNOS and set it up. So this right here is the initial configuration page that you do see on your NerdNOS. What we want to do here is we want to quickly wait for it because what it will give us is a Wi-Fi connection. This is similar to how you do this with your NerdMiner. So let's quickly wait 5 to 10 seconds and afterwards the screen should switch over and now we do see the Wi-Fi configuration. We need to connect to the Wi-Fi NerdMiner AP and the password is mine your coins. So let's hop over to my phone and let's do that. So now we are on my phone and I want to quickly go into Wi-Fi and we want to search for Wi-Fi access points. We do see the NerdMiner AP because I already do have it in there. If you don't have it in there, just make sure to connect to it and use the password mine your coins. This will automatically open up this captive portal. And what you need to do in here is pretty simple. Just go to configure Wi-Fi, wait for it, because what it does now, it is scanning for Wi-Fi signals. You select the Wi-Fi that you do want to use, for example, HomeNet in my case. Then I do put in the password. And what you need to do next is you need to change your Bitcoin address. So make sure that you do have a BTC address that you can put in here. The best idea would be to copy the Bitcoin address previously and then you can paste it in here because as soon as you do leave this captive portal nothing really has saved and you need to put in a BTC address because you're not able to access this Wi-Fi uh, web UI after you've initially set up the device so make sure to do that 
And with that, I thank everybody for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.